Video guys, it's here, and welcome to Madden 17, Chris Dale era. I don't actually say Chris Dale era enough. It's the second season as a Cleveland Browns coach. We've had an awful, it was a bad, it wasn't that great of a season last year, and we're off to a average start this year, but they're better than the regular Browns, I guess you could say in real life. Now, I'm sorry if there's like a buzzing, hum, noise. Um, I think it's with the fact that, my, I mean, my blue snowball has echo reduced stuff around it and the panels and everything so it shouldn't be so bad but i believe with all the loud noises from my flat my hard drive my playstation my xbox all that makes it really loud especially with my xbox because that thing goes really loud and then i'm trying to record it's like boom 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 it catches everything so i'm tr i need to figure out a way to fix that but again sorry for that long really introduction we're gonna get into the game against the jacksonville jaguars now we're without Corey. Coleman for this week. He'll be back next week against the Tennessee Titans. And they're without like half their team. Bronson Hill, Dan Scuda, Julius Thomas, uh, Naganque, uh, Isaac, TJ Yeldon, and Jalen Ramsey. AC, Isaac, TJ Yeldon, and then Jalen Ramsey. Like I said, those two are out for the season. Those last two big problems there as John Starks will be the starter. Now we look at Blake Bortles, who actually got just a new contract in this game now in real life he i think they just gave him his fifth year which he's playing awful or not awful but he's not playing that great as they start with the play action pass blake Bortles all the time in the world throws and it's broken up and that's emmanuel ugba getting there with the coverage so he's actually a really good coverage linebacker in this game right now for us as uh he's also our best pass uh, really rusher as we look at this offensive line, their best player on that offensive line is their center, Brian Linder. Now, John Spikes, again, is the starting running back. As we start with a second down, they hand it off to him. And he's really not going to get much against the one, the number one ranked rush defense in the league. As we come in, I think, in this game, under 800 yards. I think it was like 740 or 730, something like that. But he finds Marquise Willis on a third to six pass to the 41, a gain of 13. Now, Marquise Wilson has a big game this season so far, 750. I think he beats like two, my top two receivers with receiving yards there as he has so many. As they gave it to Spikes again, he gets really nothing going. Now, later on, a second and 10 shotgun formation. Once more, handoff Spikes. And again, I mean, he's getting a few yards here and there, and that might help in the long run if my defense wasn't so good there in that attribute. Now, third and four, they got a different running back into the backfield, back to pass. Looking, throws short, and it's dropped by Swam. Now, if you remember last week against the Packers, it was the same, similar thing with Wilkowski, their fullback, as they just dropped the wide open pass. As we get Case Keenum. Now, he wouldn't. He had a big game against the Packers, and he would be a decent quarterback for us if he didn't turn the ball over so many times in a game. And in the season, I mean, 15 turnovers through the air is bad, plus the fumbles, as we give Jeremy Hill some nice 8-yard gain to start our drive. Now in the empty shotgun back or empty shotgun look, second down and two, back to pass, looking no one open sack to fumble by Dante Fowler and we recover it thankfully by the man who gave it up Lane Johnson. Now a third and nine, back to pass, looking pressure immediately throws and it's intercepted by Jonathan Cyprian to the thirty and similar since last week as it took our first drive was intercepted this time two. Almost turnovers or two fum or two ball. Uh, shoot, the Christmas, a fumble. As this time he sacked. This is Micah Hyde, who's finally back. He's actually really good at getting to the quarterback on blitzes as he gets there for a loss of ten. Now so that, or third and twenty-seven. Immediately pressured by him, but again escapes though. Escapes again from Ailey, but finally brought down as we're getting seven by P.J. Williams and a long field goal for the Jaguars here. Big one, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it is held by Bryce Petty, and it is just short of the goalpost. It's still 0 0. Now, later on, a second and seven. Give it to Jeremy Hill, who really gets nothing there. As uh, we'll get. We're still at midfield, though. Third and seven. Back to pass. Case Keenum looking to right at his wrongs of those interceptions. Throws and a great throw to Chris Hogan, who would become a really great receiver for the replaced. For the injured Corey Coleman, I should say. Now later on, a first down and 10. And just 
airmails this one, showing that he's still not good in pass and really passing the ball. No, I mean, I'm all over the place with talking today. Still trying to just lower down the expectation or the other things here. Now, with this defense, Malik Jackson works better in a 3 4 set. Now, I played with the Jaguars, and that's what I figured out because, I mean, he worked with really well with the Broncos, and he moved here, and they moved to a 4 3, it looks like. But they also play a 3 4. I just don't understand what they do as they find Chris Hogan for a gain of eight for first down. Now, four for six, 42 yards, and the interception is not the way you start a game, really. Now, later on, back to pass. Pressure and sacked by Jones. And again, Tyler Lewan. Now, I don't understand what the heck the left tackle and the right tackle are doing with our being some of our better uh, blockers just giving up those sacks. Like, what the heck is happening? Joel Baltino wants a big contract, and he doesn't even give up sacks. But he's still wanting too much of a flipping contract that I don't really like to do. But I might have to because he's the best left guard, really, in the offseason. But at the same time, again, that's offseason work that we'll get into later on. Now on the next drive, we're up 3-0. Hand off to Spikes, and he breaks one, but not another. He brought down by Koshan Jarrett. First uh, contact by Emmanuel Ugba, of course. Now second and 14. And guess what? They're going to try a read option that got, looks like it got botched and Brandon Marshall there. Now, Brandon Marshall is the lead team leader still in tackles, but at the same time, you don't really hear me call his name much in the season so far. I mean, I've called it a few times. As they don't even block Emmanuel Ugba here. Both of them go after Mohamed Wilkerson, and you don't block our best player, our best pass rusher really on the team. That's the stupidest mistake. His sex sack on the season, tying with Jamie Collins here, as Jamie Collins has become really lackluster. Now, I'm showing you how easy, really, punt returns are or have become in Madden, as if you have a fast returner and a decent couple blockers, and depending on where the ball is kicked, or punted, I guess you would say. It's easy to get those yards. Now, great field position. We're going to give it out to Jeremy Hill. And Hill has got nine or eight there, I'm sorry. As he gets us to the 18. Now, he's doing pretty well up the middle. Now, AQ Shipley, with that three-year contract, has actually played really well with us uh, for us again. Now, we'll find Chris Hogan from the first down. Breaks a tackle and gets a six more to the 12-yard line. Now, the first quarter winding down. 13 seconds to go. Third and 10. Looking, throws in the end zone and just over reaching for Nick Jacobs as Maurice, Cal uh, Maurice Claiborne was on the coverage there. And again, my talking today right now is just awful. As again, they try to go John Spikes. And Maynard Ugbell is having some problems tackling Spikes for whatever reason today, but slowing him down for a gain of only five. Now they'll hand it off again. And again, Brandon Marshall this time bringing him down short of the first down. Now a third and three. Immediately pressured. Amber Jordan Water just came after him like a pistol. Pistol. Wow. A bullet. That would make more sense as he brings him down. Now we'll get the ball back. Jeremy Hill trying to get some yards. And he gets about six and a half. Nice job there. Now later on, this is Jeremy Hill again with some decent running ability to the left. Now we can run it either left or right because we have both uh, great uh, running block, run blocking tackles there. That's something that we should be able to do a lot of. Now, finding Philip Dorsett here is Case Keenum to the 39. A good pass. Now, Philip Dorsett is actually becoming well-known now in this series. Or not series, really. Well-known in the game. Now, here, going a little bit impatient, looking for Lane Johnson to block. Just didn't get enough time for it. Brought down short of the first down. Now, Carlos Williams in the backfield. They gave it to him. He's got a big hole, and he's got a big carry. Finally tackled for a gain of nine by Paul Pozlugsny. I've never been able to sell, say his name right, I don't think. Now later on, second and five. If we move back, I guess, I forgot to tell you, but we move back to 15-minute quarters as Carlos Williams is a yard short. Now I'm thinking I'm trading Carlos Williams because I don't really need him, and I'm done, and I kind of like Kerlin Williams better. Like Carlos Williams, don't get me wrong, has got some ability to break tackles, and Kerlin Williams, though, has got the ability to really just make people miss so many times. Partner that with Jeremy Hill, I think we'll have a tandem. Now, I did get rid of Marcus Murphy as we look here again. And he tries to get away, and he's sacked by Fowler again. Now, Dante Fowler has really become off the radar of most players. 
or most sack leaders because he hasn't really been that productive of a player. Now as Case Keenum tries to get out of the way, gets tackled at the four. Gain of seven there. Nice play to keep the play going and get us close to a field or a touchdown drive now. Third and goal. Back to pass. Looking. Pressure immediately. No one open. And it's intercepted but as he forces it to Gibson. Picked off. And another pick in the game. It's been bad. That's number 17 on the season. He's got so many fumbles too as he finds Mercedes Lewis as he gets a first down for Blake Bortles there and the Jaguars. Now this game has been more of a defensive battle with the the turnovers by Case Keenum. Now back to pass. Bortles immediately pressured again. And guess who? And then Ugba. One real goal is his ability to get to quarterback, but he's also decent in coverage. His ability to run stop would be amazing. He could be um, a, a Khalil Mack based player if he can uh, fortify those attributes as somehow this gets into the hands of Allen Robinson even with the great coverage of Cody Riggs now first down play action pass Bortles all time to throw now pressure runs down and he's sacked by Jermon Smiley great play there he's actually become a great day today as he celebrates with Emmanuel Ugba there now later on after the 5-yard sack, 2nd down at 15. Immediately pressured again, and he's brought down. Fumbles the ball. Recovered by Osimo as Max Ailey. It's a little bit um, cliche there as Jamon Smiley, who actually made the tackle at the end, would be injured and not return. 3rd and 20. Back to pass. Pressure again, and incomplete off the back of his left tackle's head. Only 4 completions in the day so far. As you can see, Jamon Smiley would not return. That's a big issue as he's becoming a great right out, uh, linebacker there. As Chris Hosen breaks a tackle, and Hogan has got a first down to the 32. Yeah, I'm telling you, player maker this season. In the final few games, he's playing a lot better than really what he was at the slot receiver's position. Now, they'll give it to Jeremy Hill on a second down, and he'll get a first down to the 46 as we're under two to go at half. Or in the half, I'm sorry. Now, back to pass looking. Fumbles the ball. Willie Jackson recovers. And he's got daylight. But Kendall Wright with Chase brings him down inside the 10 to the 6. And another turnover by Case Keenum. And really, I believe that would end his day. And that would bring in Aaron Murray to back him up as he finds Alan Hearns for a touchdown. It's Blake Bortles has got the Jaguars really tied the game and now the lead. Because you can't really win games with field goals unless your defense is outstanding. But that doesn't take in quality of how bad the offense plays with turnovers. Now, Case Keenum actually still stays in as he gets a decent carry to the 38. Again, it's 10, but short of the first down. With the first quarter still running, no timeouts were taken. Bad clock management by the Browns. Now on a second and one, looking, throws out a bounce. Nine seconds to go. Nice play by this defense so far. Third and one now from the 38. Back to pass. Immediately pressured and find Nick Jacobs. And Nick Jacobs has got us a one more opportunity before half. Now, first down. A Hail Mary opportunity here. Pressure steps to the left. Looking. Throws deep. In zone and it's intercepted again. Gibson for the third. Or for the second time in the third interception. Fourth turnover in the first half by Case Keenum. Inconsistency has been the downfall of Brown's quarterbacks. And that would have been the final straw from Chris Dale and the quarterback as he passed his head on saying, you're done today. Aaron Murray will be starting the second half. As really the game has been mostly the Browns taking the offensive route. The four turnovers has really derailed our ability to really destroy the Jaguars. Jaguars. As Aaron Murray will give it off to Jeremy Hill for the start of the third quarter. He gains a gain of four or five there. Again, Aaron Murray is probably the, is obviously the least most or least accurate as he as he tries to find Kendall Wright of the two quarterbacks. But right now, you don't really start stick with the quarterback who's thrown three interceptions and four turnovers. Two of them in his wet zone, by the way. Now later on, though, finds Jalen Marshall with a great throw off in pressure for ten. Nice play there, getting us a new set of downs though. As Jeremy Hill now looking, will give it to him, gets inside, gets a nice block, and he's got a first down gain of 12. He's got 67 on the day. So he's had some nice runs, really, in today's game, averaging some nice plays. Now first down and 10, back to pass. 
looking wide, and he's got door set. I was about to say wide open, but he gets door set over the middle between two defenders and a great pass. A gain of 16. Now the next play, Hill again, handoff. Decent run, waiting for some blocks, and uh, Jones from behind tackling him. What a gain of six. Later on, a third and four, empty set. Five receivers out. Back to pass, looking. No one open. Scales to his right. Breaks a sack. And brought down by two defenders. It can't get away from Par Parham and I believe somebody else. To take the lead though, Cody Parquet. Cody Parquet. Get your names right. My goodness. As it's good. 9-7. He's another player that I think with getting his ability or getting his kicking ability, his power up, I would give him his big contract of like 15 over... Five years, I think, or 18 over five years, I think it is, which isn't a terrible contract. But thinking of all the linemen and all the other players that we're going to have to uh, pay, I don't really want to give up too much cap room, especially in the offseason. I don't want to. I think my team isn't really needing too many big pieces. I think it's just needing a few pieces that can help solidify this team as he finds John Spikes for a big gain of 12 and a third down and short coming up. Now in the I formation here, like Bortles looking to continue this drive. Hand off, it's short. And short runs away from his blockers into two defenders and will get the ball back. Now again, here is another reason why the punt returns. I don't know if you should really fix him. If you're looking for realistic ability, you should. But if you're looking for ownage, then you don't really need to. As Philip Dorsett, again, you, I like Philip Dorsett because when playing as the Colts, he was the most explosive other than T.Y. Hilton because of his ability to escape defenders and his outright speed past them. Reminding you of like a Devin Hester slash Josh Cribbs and some other kind of some other fast players, you know. But that's the big thing. Now, we don't have one as, uh, one big player as we found Kendall right here as receiver. Like, you know, they all have that one outstanding player. Our offensive line is the best thing on this team. Zach Martin, I believe, is the highest overall player. And he's given up uh, quite a few sacks. As we find Jalen Marshall spins and down to the six or five there. But, you know, looking at it, if we had maybe another top target, like I'm not saying that Jacobs is a terrible player, but he's not a set, like a Jason Witten, whatever, tight end, or Jimmy Graham, Kronk Gronkowski. You know, he's not one of those guys. You don't have, We don't have a Julio Jones, Doug Baldwin, Antonio Brown. We don't have one of those guys. I thought Terrell Pryor could have been one of those guys, but he just didn't play well. Now he's a Patriot, and he's doing well there. So maybe it was our scheme. Maybe it was our team itself. In real life, he's a Redskin. I don't care, really. I like Terrell Pryor because he's from Ohio State. I liked Ohio State at the time. He was the quarterback. So, I mean, you can't really do that. Now here again, the, the punts. Now this one is a touchdown really saving tackle by number 59. That was a, he, if he did not come back and get that guy or get Phil Dorsett, that was a touchdown all the way. Now let's get back actually into the game plan as it finds Nick Jacobs here. Aaron Murray with a great block actually from Kendall Wright as he gets all the way to the 28. And again, Nick Jacobs is probably our best pass catcher although Dan, in the tight end department. Although Daniel Brown was the man we brought in to be a pass catcher. He really didn't really work out that way and he's not going to be on the team now also Michael Williams I don't think is going to come back although he's a decent cover or running blocker one blocker I try to move him to our tackle or guard or something as a fumble Jamie Collins the only way apparently he can play is on special teams now as he gets a fumble recovery there and we'll get another chance third quarter ending here second and eh, second and ten back to pass looking looking throws caught Kendall Wright touchdown 17 yards out untouched and we're up big. Now we're starting to fall, or go away from the Jaguars. Push away. Pull away. Whatever the hell you call it. 26-7. Now fourth quarter starting. Pressure. Throws. Spikes. He's got to just escape. Can't escape Jamal Taylor. And short of the first down. 70 yards through the air so far for Blake Bortles. As uh, he's obviously the better of the two in the game. Uh, right now, but he's not having a good day because of our defense. As Alan Hearn catches this one, but there's another flag. As Cristiano looks upset, but it would be on the offense. As they would get Kelvin Betcham for a hold, and that's a third and 13 now. 
Back in the shotgun. Back to pass. Pressure throws. And it's Lee for like three yards. So they'll punt it away again. This time the punt wasn't terrible. But we're at near. We're near we failed. So again punting. I don't know if I'll do it really. I'm going to try to make it really more real. I, don't, I can't really make those realistic. Uh, I was doing fine with Kerwin Williams at the side I guess. I don't know. Really what I want to do. But he finds Nick Jacobs here. And Nick Jacobs at a third and six. Goes to the 30. 100 yards for Murray. And he just started today's second half. He just started in the second half. He's got seven for ten. Now Carlos Williams in the backfield. Third and two. We'll hand it off. Breaks one tackle. But he can't escape the others. As he's brought down short. And a field goal opportunity here. To make it 29-7. We do. Now Blake Ward is back. Throws on pressure. And he's got Lewis. And Lewis with a great job to get the first down. To the 35. Michael Hyde pushing him out. But still a great play there. Now first down and 10. Bortles pressure immediately. Throws. Finds John Scott off his back foot. To the 48 for a gain of 13. Now closing in 100 yards. Great job with the pass. Now back to pass. <laughs> Second and 10. Looks. Edge. He's got Rashad Green. And Green to the 48. You know, he never really been a playmaker. But uh, he's got that play. Third and 6 now. Bortles trying to keep this drive alive. Throws. He's got intercepted. He has got P.J. Williams with a pick. And two guys missed Blake Bortles. That would have been a pick six if they got him. But brought down at the 48. Now we'll get another drive going. 6-16 to go in the game. Hand off. Jeremy Hill breaks a tackle. Just stiff arms that man out the way. He got 121 yards through the air. Or through the air. On the ground, 23 carries and a touchdown. Now they're on a third and one. Handoff Hill again. Powers over a man. Breaks almost two more. And down to the 31. Big day here. And uh, again, he was a former division rival for the Bengals. We traded, I think, a few, maybe a pick or so. As Aaron Murray can't get anyone open. Sacked by Jones. Now, again, Hill, I think we traded one or two non-real big playmakers on our team. And maybe a draft pick. I don't know. But right now, looking at it, I believe we still have the first, second, and fifth in the first round, as that one's just not even close. We'll have to take a long field goal opportunity here. And this is where the power needs to be up of like three or four points because it's just short. Even with one at his back, he needs that 97 to 99 kick power, and we would probably be making a lot more 50 yard kicks. Now on first down and 10, a great throw to Marquise Lee, who did not really need to spin back, as that probably would have saved. That would have uh, been a touchdown if it didn't, as they got a big first down. Now at the 35, Bortles throws. He's got Robinson, who's only found like three times today, as he got them to the 21-yard line. Now again, if we had a player like Robinson or somebody like that, we could probably be throwing a lot like Marco Schmidt in the game against ECU had a big game in his best as Mercedes Lewis holding his shoulder is down great hit by Kirksky but always bad to see something like that now later on a second and goal as the Jaguars are trying to get something going still have some time but need to hack fast finds Lee brought down at the two 144 they're not taking they're not hurrying up back to pass looks and he's got another great catch this time, or throw, to Swam, who dropped one earlier. And I don't know what it is. Just behind two defenders, and it's just catch after catch after catch in the end zone. Packers did it last week, as the Jaguars did it this week. But a minute long, but we're not letting Blake Bortles get to two. They'll need the offside kick to get something. But he kicks it right to Kirksky, and that will really do it. I mean, a first down will end it, but at the same time, you're looking at us up 16 points. So first down ends it. Second and four. Jeremy Hill will solidify the victory here. 29-13. Now we are, I think this is win number six on the season because we were four and four last week with the win. That was five and four. So this is six and four. Winning record so far. So <laughs> we still have quite a bit of games though. Six more to go. And two of them that I'm the most looked forward to. Titans. And Broncos. Broncos will be the last week's game as we make it 32-13. They'll get the ball. One last chance. Back to pass on a second and 10. All day to throw and he can't escape. Finally brought down by Asad Raisman who had all day to throw but just couldn't find anybody open. Great cover stack there. Now they'll take or they'll hurry up. Third and 14. Back to pass. Pressure immediately throws. Caught and dropped by Alan Hearns. That one would have gotten them something. Now it's a fourth down. They're just going to go for it and try to get as much points as po or yards as possible. Fourth down. 
Low snap. Play action pass. Pressure immediately. No one to go to. Throws deep. He's got Robinson, though. And into opponent territory. No timeouts. Game's over. We have a 32-13 win. Similar to the Colts win. And uh, six and four. Six more games. And we'll see you then. Thanks for watching. And see you.